Hello, fashion wreckers, and welcome back to my channel where we take old clothes and make it. Fashion. Fashion! So, today we're gonna make a bag, kind of like a fabric manipulation bag since the beginning of times, basically. <laughs> I wanted to try out this smoking fabric manipulation technique. In case you like smoking, smoking, here I love smoking. Every day, 20 past 4. Smoking and chill. I'm talking about smoking. This is a little bit of a traditional, you can say, old-fashioned fabric manipulation technique which involves gathering the fabric with needle and thread so that patterns are cured. And I'll admit it, I used to be a bit more into the 420 thing too until I coincidentally stumbled upon like a Canadian smoking tutorial. It's almost like the best of both worlds. It's like, like a smoker that's made whilst smoking. This Canadian smoking technique is just so stunning. That shit looks awesome. It's not necessarily something difficult. It's more like it takes time. Circumstances are like, I have time. Cause I <coughs> got tired. Anyway, so I'm gonna use this piece of felt today. Normally I always make stuff from old clothes, but today I don't think it makes sense. We need quite a bit of fabric because the technique was shrink it out, shrink it in. I would say it's like that stock material. If you guys know by now, if it ain't fortified, I'm not drinking it. So I'm just gonna fortify the fabric. I would use this kind of adhesive that's like sticky on one side and kind of fabric-y on the other side. One eternity later. I don't think I have enough material, so I'm not gonna fortify the fabric. So, you may be curious how the bag is gonna look. And then I'm totally with you. I have no idea, I have no clue to be honest. I'm just gonna cut this piece in two to make a two-sided bag. And that's all I know for now. At this point in time, I was still contemplating to add like separate handles to the bag. I'm reserving some fabric for that. And you might also want to save some for facings. So, then I'm gonna take my rulers and we're gonna add squares on the back of the fabric, of course. Um, basically like a grid that's gonna show us where to place our stitches. <laughs> Maybe 40 by 40? Comment down below. Uh, Too late. Uh, to make sure that the squares are more or less exactly two centimeters. We don't have to cut it yet, we can cut it later. So if it's way too small, we can always add a little bit. Just a little life hack for all the peoples. Might get a little bit dizzy from all the numbers on the rulers. Where eyes are not really used to look any further than 420, for example. Ingenious! Yes, I've heard those words before, yeah. Then everything should line up <laughs> perfectly. Should. But if not, it's always safe to blame the ruler. Oh yeah, you might want to use another, another, another pen, like something else that you can erase easily. I don't think it matters too, 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 too much. I think it's a great moment for you to not get me out of my concentration. Instead, just like the video, subscribe now. Then I'm gonna add diagonal lines in the squares in a pattern that's basically kind of like arrows up and down. But for each line, you make sure there's one empty square in between. And pretend that everything is straight. I have experience with that. I recommend to screenshot it now if you're actually crazy enough to follow this tutorial. So we're gonna take our needle and thread, thread the needle, and begin our admittedly arguable fun activity. Smucking. We're just gonna connect the ends of the diagonal lines together. Kind of like this children's game, just connecting the dots. It is that easy, guys. It doesn't look as easy as it, <laughs> as it is. It's not gonna tell anybody, obviously. Just gonna collect the compliments calmly and tell everybody that we made it ourselves. Thread is a little thicker than just the normal sewing machine thread. It's like the industrial sewing thread. You can use normal thread as well. I should take a little bit of a thicker thread that's this really... <laughs> this, this doesn't break, so you don't have to make that many knots, so it might be a little quicker. For the people in the back who really never hold a needle and thread, first of all, what are you doing here? No, 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 I didn't mean it like that. I just mean to say, how come you're so stupid? Anyway, I'll explain it crystal clear. Make a little knot at the end of the thread, then anchor the thread down at the first point by pulling it through, leaving a loop, pulling the thread through that loop, and repeat that two or three times. Then I pick up the fabric in the second point, pull it to the first point so that a pleat occurs, and then secure the thread in the same way by pulling it through, leaving a loop, and pulling the thread through the loop two to three times. That may sound a little abundant, but you do want to remember that we want this bag to survive the apocalypse. Hello. <laughs> They start heavy breathing when I have to concentrate. As for the order, I don't think it really matters. I think it's just most logical to work in horizontal or vertical lines. However, I already realized in my fabric, if I pick up two little threads, if I just pick one or two threads, pull them out of the fabric, and it's kind of damaged. It's like my spirit animal. I'm hopping around the field. 
without cutting the thread in between. However, you don't want to have tension on the thread where you're not supposed to have the tension when you hop around because that will distort the pattern on the front. You can always still cut it in between later. Oh my god, guys, I finally have a new chair! Now I have this really cute vintage. Is that a turn? Yeah, it turns. Hello! So I did not even go all the way with the pattern because I didn't want to make it too big. So I have like here these kind of four squares that I didn't do. It's a little bit smaller than 40 by 40. These textures are absolutely crazy. I'm, I'm thrilled. I love it. Also in this material. And I've been trying to think like what makes sense to do. And I'm not really sure to be honest. At first I thought it might be cute to have a scrunchy handle. Like on the scrunchy bag that I did. Then I felt like that texture might be competing a little too much with the texture of the bag. Which you can totally check out the Alexander Wang scrunchy bag tutorial if you like to make that one. I'm gonna keep it humble and take inspiration from a, a plastic bag. I'm just gonna trim the edges down to the desired size of the bag. So I'm just gonna pin it together, like the bottom and the sides I'm gonna close already for a little bit, just to see what happens, you know? I hope it's not gonna be too granny with the velvet. Oh, and here I am thinking I'm looking so sexy! Then I'm gonna sew on the facing, which is basically just a white strip of fabric with a hole. Taking my last iron-on interfacing to reinforce just a little bit around the hole. Then I'm gonna sew around the hole, take a shot for every time I say hole. That would be a whole lot to handle! So laying the facing on top of the back, stitching with half a centimeter seam allowance. Then I'm gonna cut the hole in the back too. Turn the facing around. Yes, that could have been stitched all a little bit nicer. However, a little bit of steam does wonders. To make sure that the facing is not gonna peek out whilst wearing the back, I'm gonna stitch down the seam allowance on top of the facing. Now, once everything is done with the hole, then I'm gonna turn that around and I'm just gonna sew from two sides. In the middle, that's obviously gonna be like too small to really reach with the machine. So I hate to break it to you, but uh, gotta do some hand stitches, baby. It's the only way. So, still there, huh? Well, ah, let's finish it off then. <laughs> Thought maybe a little strip of cardboard in the top part will hold it all a little more up. Fucking nice. <laughs> I need all my effort for this, man. <laughs> We're almost there, but as we all know, for almost you can't buy anything. So we continue bravely, solely fueled by adrenaline at this point. Close the sides, including the facing part. I'm gonna chop a little bit more off, because otherwise the whole top part of the back is getting way too wide. Then we're gonna create the lining, which is blue. That's not really the important part. But honestly, guys, it's just two squares of fabric. So and it's so simple. Well, in theory at least, until you, you know, you start. Yes, this uh, <clears throat> lightning turned out way too small, but I figured that would be better. Because that way, when you put things in your bag, kind of casual scrunchy effect that the sides have will stay more in place, I think. Just make sure to turn it around, which I almost forget, so that the seam allowances are on the right. If I turn it inside out, then it should look like that. Fold that in again and close uh, the last piece of lining with a hand stitch. <laughs> Our hand back, shop our back, tote back kind of situation. Good okay. It is a little bit of a vibe, I think. Please don't forget to subscribe. And if you're already subscribed, turn the notifications on under the bell icon so that you'll be notified of my new videos. Let me know what you think and uh, I hope to see you in my next video. Oh, I don't want to stand up anymore. <sighs> Bam. Bam. I hope to see you in one of my next videos. Check out my playlist as well.